Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on SAN2 here. Um, in this video we are going to be going over the Cura 2.5. Is it worth upgrading if you have the 14 or 1.4 version or 2.4 version? I know that those are the two most popular ones. Should you upgrade to the 2.5? Um, well, let's take a look. There's a few things in here um, that they up uh, updated and I will go over it with you. If you notice here, this is the 2.5 version of Cura, which just came out about two days ago. Um, I have installed it and uh, used it a little bit. If you would like to download this, I'll put the link at the bottom so you can get it uh, downloaded and set up. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, before we start, if you're not familiar with the basics of Cura, I will put up a video link on the bottom left side. Go ahead and click on that and I'll show you how to use the basic functions of Cura. Um, we are in the process of making a expert mode video, basically uh, that lets you refine um, your STL files a little bit more in Cura. But right now the main concern is 2.5. Is it worth it or not? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what changes came. So if you go here to change log and show change log, it will show you the 2.5 and what things that have changed. Uh, they're saying basically they have improved the speed of the printers and profiles, materials, and print cores even faster. Um, opening up 3MF, which is 3D manufacturer format, is a lot faster as well. It's going to take tenth of a second or tenth of the time that it originally took. Um, also, uh, they have sped up um, the engine, the multi threading, um, so Cura can process multiple operations at the same time and there won't be much of a lag. The only drawback to this that I didn't like personally is that I'm a Mac user and this was for Windows and Linux. So maybe Windows was having the problem with this and Mac wasn't and they only uh, did the changes for them so I really don't know what the what the story there is um, also another cool thing is preheat the bed plate uh, with a connected printer so you if you have a uh, multi uh, maker 3 or along those line of that brand of printer you can actually have it connected to your computer and preheat the bed uh, as you're changing the STL files and making formats in here why is that helpful uh, because most of you know that to preheat your bed, it usually takes anywhere from five to seven minutes, depending on what your temperature is at. And then, not to mention, after that, it does the nozzle. So you can uh, actually get that preheated, and I think you can print straight from here, which will give you an option at the bottom once we're done. Uh, better layout for 3D layer viewing options. So basically, what it's saying is. Once you put your file down, it gives you better uh, angles or whatever it might be. Uh, I haven't really messed with that yet, and we'll go into that right now. Uh, disa disable, <laughs> wow. disable automatic slicing. Um, they have turned um, that off so the users can actually go in there and do that themselves, giving you a little bit better experience as far as how to do that. Um, where are we at? Disabled automatic slicing, which we just went over. Auto scale off by default before it was on. Now they have turned it off. That is something I am not too fond of, and I'll show you why in a minute when I load an actual print in uh, or STL file in. Uh, print cost calculation. Basically, what this is is if you enter the size of your spool, meaning in weight or uh, in, in grams or in kg, and um, tell them how much you paid for it it actually lets you know what the cost of each item that you're printing or each STL file that you're printing what was the cost on it so you just have an idea of how much you're spending uh, things like that uh, what else g-code reader I was excited about this one uh, basically what it's saying is if you convert something to a g-code or you download g-code from somewhere else you can actually import g-code in here and when you do that you can modify it at that time and create a new g-code so that was kind of cool. Um, I thought so anyways. Uh, disregard and keep changes pop-up. Basically what that means is uh, they have changed the pop-up that appears when a user changes a printing profile after setting uh, custom printing, uh, after inputting custom uh, printing settings. So basically me, I don't have a profile guys. I don't use one. 
I know there's a lot out there, but those are just guidelines. Every print that I do is different, so I always modify my numbers based on that. For example, on the last one I did, I think it was like a 0.1 layer height. If it's not that important, I'll do a 0.2 layer height. The thickness I might change, the infill I might change. So I don't, I personally don't have um, one set. The only thing that stays the same for me is my machine settings, and that's because I like to set the width, height, and depth of the the bed, so they, so the the slicing software knows what my parameters or, or dimensions are for my plate and how big it is. Um, besides that, they've done some bug fixes, which I'm not really gonna go over. Uh, you guys can take a quick read on that if you want. So we're going to go over some of the stuff uh, that they talked about and see how that makes a difference. So let's go ahead and load in a file. I'm going to go to Downloads and the Arcadia ship. Okay. Where's my ship? It's saying nothing to slice because none of the models fit the build volume. Please scale or rotate models to fit. My ship is actually up here. This is the auto scaling that they disabled, which uh, I'm not too fond of because normally on the old one, 2.4, when you dropped it, it just fell right in here and then you could rescale it according to that size. Now it actually prints on the size that uh, I downloaded. But that's an easy fix. Go ahead and click on it. We're going to go to scale and click and move. The one thing I don't like about this though, if you notice here, I'm holding it down, left click, I'm going slowly one by one. You see how it's flickering back and forth? I mean, it just jumps dramatically in size. Um, it's just crazy. I don't, I don't like that feature at all. I think it's just a bug um, that they're, they're gonna have to work out because on 2.4 it worked perfectly fine. Um, Okay, so but you can all, always go in here and change it manually, guys, just like before. Just make sure uniform scaling is on so everything is proportional. Uh, let's go ahead and see if rotate still works the same. We're going to lay it flat. Okay, it is. Uh, we're going to rotate this sucker like so. The auto bed leveling part is still active, so it's pretty good. Notice how my ship was at the bottom. It came right back up, so that was kind of cool. I did like that part. Okay, the undo feature. For some reason, it doesn't work. Um, I don't know why. I'm clicking outside of it. Undo. Nothing. I click on the print itself and undo. Nothing happens. But you notice it's going back down and up again. It's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to put it back flat the way it was before I moved it, and it's not doing it. So that's one of the issues I did run into um, on that. So the scaling and the undo button uh, are not working, and, and that's kind of an inconvenience because a lot of people, you know, they spend some of the time scaling, and if they don't like it, they can just do undo and go back, but in this case, you cannot. Um, what else did I run into? Uh, another thing was... If you notice the ship right here, I'm going to go ahead and turn it a little. Okay, and I'm going to go to scale. And we're at 240 right now. Let's try going to 350. Notice my ship still fits. I am not at my max Z height yet. And I still have space on the sides. Okay, now when I enlarge a print, I noticed here the slicing um, loading bar keeps loading and it will go to maybe about here sometimes it stops there um, but it doesn't load everything now I, I tried this earlier um, I made the ship this scale right here and uh, it just kept saying slicing eventually you'll notice this bar will go away and I'll just say slicing and I left it on for about 15-20 minutes walked away did some things came back and it still didn't do it. Um, so basically, I didn't have a time. It was at zero. It didn't tell me how many grams of filament I was using. Um, so I thought that was kind of annoying. Even though Curious Time's always been a little off, at least I knew roughly what I was looking at. See? It's not loading. There's no information here. But if I click on this, and let's say if I just make it 50, 
which dramatically drops the size of the ship. Now it's actually going to go all the way through and tell me the time and the amount of grams that it's going to take. So I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, that is one thing I did notice that you guys might want to watch out for. So um, basically these are the little issues that I noticed with the 2.5. Now if you still want to download it, like I said earlier, I'm going to put a link below so you guys can go to their page and take a look. I would still recommend using the 2.4, which I will also leave a link for um, at the end and in the middle of the video so you can learn the basics of Cure. And 2.4 works well for me. <clears throat> so everything I showed you that wasn't working does work in the 2.4 version. Okay, and the last thing we're going to go over is basically the update they did stating that the G code can be brought into the program. Um, let me just make sure, double check that I did get that information right. Before I do that, okay, the G code reader has been reintroduced, which means users can load G code files or G code from files and display it in the layer view. Okay, perfect. So it should at least show me that even though if I can't modify it or anything, but they're saying that you can. Um, so let's do this. Go ahead and save it. We will save it to our desktop. Okay, so it's doing it right there. All done. Click on open folder and desktop G code. There it is. All right, so we're going to try this two ways. Let's go ahead and delete this bad boy right there. Or you know what? Let's see. Yep, open file. So it's already there. Oops, this was the STL file. That's not going to work. I'm going to go to desktop again. There's your G code. Now it's looking for it. Oh, failed to load Arcadia ship fixed G code. Oh, look at that. Um, I just created that G code in Cura just a minute ago and it's out there and I'm trying to import it back in and it's not doing it. Please load a 3D model. Okay. Well, let's try doing it a different way. I noticed with some, some things before, um, that if you just grab it and drag it in there, it does do it. And if you load it, it does not. Nope, I got an error both times. So apparently, the G code uh, feature that they're talking about, as far as Mac is concerned, is not working. So I can't transfer the G code back in, even though I just made it in the same program a couple minutes ago. Okay, so uh, that part for me is not working. But that's about it, guys. Um, my opinion at the moment would be do not upgrade to the 2.5 yet. Um, again, maybe it's just the Mac thing uh, and Windows works perfectly fine. I will try that. My buddy has Kira on his Windows. Uh, I will ask him how it works and if everything works great, then I will leave a comment at the bottom letting you guys know it works great for Windows, sucks for Mac. Uh, but if he's having the same issues, then I will let you know on that as well. Um, with that said guys if there's any questions comments or concerns you might have please leave a comment below I respond to every comment left by anybody either your subscriber or not also if there's some videos you would like to see that you haven't seen out there on YouTube or on the internet can't get information on it um, leave it in the comment and I'll see what I can do for you guys okay uh, with all that said I hope you enjoyed this thrilling video in the comparison of the 2.4 and the 2.5 version and which one you should stay with um, like always guys good luck and happy printing if you like this video give us a like and subscribe to our channel bye